This is Crazy Taxi. I played this game so much on the Ocean City Boardwalk and also on Dreamcast. It represented to me a sense of freedom, of flight, away from some sort of unknown evil. I was unbound in this game. Bear in mind, Crazy Taxi predates Grand Theft Auto by a year or two. I wanted to exist in a type of world where I could just pick people up and make them happy. There have been two people who attempted to create this car in real life. There's one at a museum in Japan, and there's another one in a wrecking yard in the United Kingdom. There's none in the United States. I'm going to be the first in the United States. We're going to make Crazy Taxi in real life, and this is what I bought. This is a 1963 Ford Galaxy convertible. Is it true to the real life car? Well, no, because in our in Crazy Taxi, they didn't get rights to classic American cars. They got rights to music, which we can't play copyrighted music. They got rights to brands, but they didn't get the rights to cars. So all the cars in the games are in, in Crazy Taxi are just amalgamations of classic American cars. So it really frees us up to do whatever we wanted. And I wanted an excuse to buy another classic car. What we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this car yellow with a checkerboard pattern going down the side all the way to the end. And then later on, we're going to try to make this car go like the real Crazy Taxi. Right now, what's under this is a 352 cubic inch V8. Sounds great, that's 5.8 liters. Well, it's not the 390. The 390 GT was the good one. This one is the, eh, it's the grocery getter engine. The 352 cubic inch engine was made to do one thing and that's sell the 390. Well, you could have the 352 or for a little bit more, you could have the big 390. What is that, 6.2 liters or something like that? On top of that, this only has a little two barrel carburetor feeding this big engine. So all this thing really does is cruise. Now for now, that's good. But later, we gotta find a solution. How many people can this car hold? Well, how much weight can you put in it before the rear diff starts dragging on the ground? Take your pick. Seat belts, an option back then. This car does have seat belts, but these don't match the car. Probably at some point in the history, someone put in these airline seat belts. But you know what? I wear them because it keeps you in front of the steering wheel. Because these vinyl seats, you just slide around back here. So really, anybody who's riding in the back either has to grab onto the outside of the car. The arms for the roof are under this vinyl cover. They could grab onto that. Maybe if they wanted to, they could pull back the chrome covers for the ashtrays and hang on there. By the way, the ashtrays, big enough to put an entire cigarette down into them. And if Ian Fidance doesn't smoke in this car, I will be insulted. Up front, we have a gigantic steering wheel, horn ring. We have working heat, no air conditioning, you don't need that. This is the AM radio. I will keep that, I'll keep it in a box, but I will put a retro sound unit in there. This is a mechanical clock, currently not running. I'd like to get it running or at least uh, maybe replace this. What I'd like to do is put a Holly Sniper two barrel fuel injection unit on this, which will make this car pop like it will in the game. But we'll get to that. Welcome to the driver's seat. You have a gigantic steering wheel, you have power steering, but no power brakes. Power brakes, that's a fancy option. So you will be putting both feet on the brake pedal down here in the event of panic stops. What type of brakes does this have? Four drums. Whether or not I attempt to convert this to disc brakes is a difficult thing because let's look out here at these wheels. Let's look at the back one. 
the wheels themselves are 14 inches. That is tiny. I don't know of any Ford disc brakes that will fit a wheel this small. Well, just put bigger wheels on it. I don't wanna. This is the original aluminum hubcaps. Look how beautiful they are. I don't wanna change the original look. We did that already when I built my Falcon and I was chasing problems with that. I wanna keep this as original as possible because unlike the Falcon in the 1960s, this was the car you bought when you had money. The only thing higher than a Galaxy 500 was a Lincoln Continental. They, Ford was going after Cadillac with this car. When you drive it, it shows. Even with all my bushings that are all cracked, those gotta be replaced, this thing still rides like a dream. Well, large wheelbase, right? Here's our ashtray. Big enough for an entire pack of cigarettes. Now the inside of these are cardboard. Lighter for your cigarettes, obviously. The wipers, unlike the cheap Falcons, the wipers on this, electric. No waiting for vacuum with those. I got two little knobs right here. They're called air. What they do is they open up vents on the floor that blow right in your junk. It's exquisite. Starting, right now it's been running, so it's probably gonna pop right off, right? Yeah. My Falcon could never do that. That was hardly one turn of the crankshaft and she's running. I'm running, uh, when I got her, she was running about three degrees of timing. That's it, three degrees before top dead center. Bumped it up to about nine. She went a little bit faster. Now she's idling a little bit higher than I'd like. I'm still gonna do the thing, well, with the carburetor and go back and forth and get the timing. But if I can get a Holly EFI system, I can do that from a little screen right in here, change timing, maintain uh, AFR. And I can hear the people talking about, you gotta make the carburetor work. I did that with the Falcon. I'm done with carburation. I just want fuel injection. Oh, here's another fun thing. Look down at the pedals. They were so slippery that I went and got grip tape down here, just like you get on a skateboard, so my feet don't slip off the pedals. Honestly, this stuff works really well, and if you have a car that the rubber has come off your pedals, just go online and just go get some uh, grip tape and just put that on the pedals. It's honestly better than a rubber pad. Thank you so much to Chris from Lick Arcade for letting me use this crazy tax machine and helping me film this. We're gonna meet a lot of people in the video game community with this car. To transform the Galaxy into Crazy Taxi, we've come to Speed Pro in Lemoyne, Pennsylvania, which I, I almost wanna say is Harrisburg, but it's on the west side of the Susquehanna River, so technically not Harrisburg. I get bent up about all these like little subtleties about Pennsylvania landscape. I mean, because it's on that side of the Susquehanna River, it means that soda has become pop. I can't stand. Anyway, Speed Pro, very large graphics. They're not only going to make the wrap, they are also going to embed the checkerboard pattern within the wrap. How do you like that? So this thing is going to be durable. Right now, you see them checking out the car and taking measurements to find out how much material they need to get. Time for a flash forward. So the base coat was done at Redefined Reflections in Harrisburg. Should we call it Harrisburg? It's kind of like Lemoyne, but, you know, everybody outside of Pennsylvania. No one from outside Pennsylvania knows any other cities besides Pittsburgh and, Pittsburgh and Philly. I could have said this was Altoona and you would have believed me. Anyway, what's, what they figured out how to do is how to get the fake vents off the back of the car, which someone in 1963, 62 really, you know, was just drinking at the Edison assembly plant out on Long Island with a lead hammer and just went boom, boom, there it's done. And these things are press fitted and they're not made to come out. So they were able to gently pry them off so that they were able to put the logos back on. Same deal with the Galaxy logos in the rear. I was expecting that they'd have to cut around them or 
maybe leave little squares, but no, they got, they were able to get it off and get the wrap on the inside of every single part. Now there's a Galaxy logo on the front. They were able to get that off, get the trim off, tuck everything underneath. This looks amazing. The one weird thing is that the so-called HVAC parts of the car is here. People think these are vents for the engine. They're not. They're just for the air to come in to go over the heater core and either give you hot air or no air and just... And it's not your foot vents. The foot vents are direct from outside. Uh, they called me and asked, do you want to like paint these black or do something? And I said no. It sort of matches the interior a little bit anyway. Whether I change the interior now, in the game, the interior is red. But I don't know anybody who do, does car seats and does fuzzy stuff, so I may have to learn how to sew car seats myself. I didn't show you this, but I went on Amazon and bought a bunch of red fur. <laughs> so maybe I'll spend some time later this summer stitching seat covers over this. It'll look okay. But this thing is going to go back to Speed Pro and get the printed checkerboard pattern going down the side once all little bits are, are traded. And I'm so glad that I got black wheels because it looked a little bit weird. Oh, by the way, the, uh, the white walls that you saw earlier, yeah, two of them had gigantic bulges in them. And I drove for about 300 miles on tires that were ready to pop and Bruce Hen saw it and he's like, uh, you shouldn't be driving on these tires. Because probably what happened because most old Winga Dinga guys who buy old cars are like, I gotta have the Cokers and get the good white wall tires on them. I don't care what it costs. And most of those things are terrible, terrible tires. They're not modern radials. They're like recreations. And then they get them. It's like, it only comes out in the summertime. So, of course, the tires sit and they get hard. And then people like me get them and immediately start doing burnouts in them and then just wreck them. So these are running now just hand cooks just normal and hand cook does make them in 14 inches which is i thought we were going to have a tough time finding modern tires like nope they make them in this tire and fantastic and it's gonna oh i can't wait so thank you so much and we'll check back with you when we get the side stripes on here it is this is the reveal with the full-on graphics crazy taxi in real life check this out the pattern is built into the wrap there's no separation as it goes along and what they did is because if you look down the side of a 63 Galaxy like this, you see this was when people designed cars by hand. So the space in between the top bit of trim here and the bottom of the trim there changes as the car goes along. So the challenge for Dave and everybody at Speed Pro was to make this taxi pattern, the checkerboard pattern, go down the side. The middle line stays parallel to the ground. And then they have to tuck under, cut under, as the trim pieces on the Galaxy change, get narrower and wider as it goes along. And that they did a fantastic job. This wrap is very, very thick. It's a five-year wrap. So it looks like I'm holding on to this car for five years. So now that she's visually complete, I will see you this Saturday, June 24th, at Too Many Games. We're having our RCR car meet in the parking lot next to Too Many Games, next to the BJ's Discount Gas. I'll make a post. In fact, why don't I post a little map right here? Eh. And I'll make a community post on YouTube. So thank you so much for helping make this happen. Thank you for participating in the giveaways. This is one of the things it's gonna fund. And now this car has a job. We gotta do road trips with it. And we got to have adventures with Crazy Taxi in real life. I'll see you guys out there. See you this weekend.